Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. If you have a phone, you can uh, grab my business card by pointing your camera at the QR code here. You can get my contact information. Goes right into your phone, so you've got it. So you can call me, right? And if you be so kind, return the favor. Send me your contact information back so we stay in, in contact. One of the reasons why we come to these real meetings is for the teaching and for the networking. I heard it over and over again. We want to network, get to know more and more people. There might be another partner in this room that will help you reach your goals. It is wonderful when we come together in real meetings like this. And I actually started one a year ago. We're celebrating our first anniversary next month in Suffolk. We meet in North Suffolk. Yep. Uh, simply to get the word out about real estate investing. This thing is fantastic. I'll wait just another 30 seconds or so so you can get the QR code. Uh, great. And I'll show it again at the end if you don't, haven't gotten it yet. All right. All right. Let's see if we can get this thing going here. All right. Okay. Let me do an intro. I am the president and CEO of Prosperity One. That's my company. I'm the founder and the host of Team Blessing Real. We talked about that. I'm a former information, director of information technology. My background is engineering. Boy, isn't that wild to go from engineering to go to real estate. <laughs> I've always loved real estate. Always. Always. I've been doing this full time three years now. Prior to that, it was all IT, both on the corporate side, also on my small business in computers. I've done that about half of my career, small business half my career in the corporate world. I've absolutely loved that side of the business, loved it. In fact, I love small business so much, I actually wrote a book about it. I've written two books, one on the ministry side and one on how to start your own successful small business. You can get it on Amazon. Check me out. I kept hearing people in my church, they want to be entrepreneur like me, even as a bivocational pastor. I always kept a business on the side, primarily for the tax advantages. <laughs> I always, and that's why I got into being an accidental landlord for the tax advantages. I wasn't interested in cash flow, wasn't interested in appreciation. I was just interested in lowering my taxes because you want to make a high income, right? You want to shield that. It's not how much you make, it's how much you Absolutely. Yeah. So I always loved real estate, even thought about being a real estate agent one point in time, part time, even thought about doing it because I simply love properties. Isn't it nice to go into a property and look at it? Isn't it nice going into a new house and just look at it? Just sweet. Anyway, so that's a little bit about me. Uh, as I mentioned, I'm a minister, I'm a speaker, I've authored two books. I'm the husband of Kathleen Jordan for 45 years. She took five years off of me. <laughs> If you talk to my wife, she'll say, yeah, include that five. That was another five years I had to put up with them. So, uh, yeah, I have six children. They're all grown now. They're all married. Absolutely. All married. And all six of them have children except for one. So we are still growing with the grandchildren. Seriously, we're still growing. No grades? No grades. No, I'm not that old yet. No. <laughs> I am a Suffolk native. Um, grew up here. Long story, I won't even get into it on those of you who were there Tuesday night. I went through my whole background. I'm not going to bore you with that tonight. Anyway, we're here to talk about sub two. How many have ever heard of subject two? Just raise your hand. Ah, oh, nice. You've heard of it. Okay. How many have ever done a sub two? All right. Well, let's do some more, okay? Let's do some more. I love sub two. Love two. I love the creative stuff, okay? And Somebody said in the back of the room, oh, I'm a little leery of doing a subject two. By the end of the day, you're going to feel comfortable doing a subject two. You will. You will. You're going to say, I want one. I'm going to go get one. All right, so let's go from there. Disclaimer, we're doing education today. I'm not offering any legal accounting or professional services advice. I do do consulting. I'd have to sit down with you, see your situation. So we can properly apply it before I can do consulting. Uh, but we're doing general education here. And I think it's cool education that you can apply to yourself. I'm just letting you know, put a disclaimer up front. So I'm not going to assume anything. I heard some people say they were newbies. I heard some people with some experience in the room. That's awesome. This is where you come and learn, improve, get better, and do more business. 
This is awesome. So I'm not going to assume you understand anything subject to works. If you understand uh, all the uh, nooks and crannies of it. And so I'm not going to assume you know anything. So we'll start all the way with basics. We'll start with definitions. Can we do that? Yes, all right. Let's talk about title. Because sometimes you hear people talk about title deed. Let's get the terminology straight. Because if you got the terminology straight, you can do a subject too. What's the title? Title is simply a, a legal term, which means ownership. Every time I say title, I want you to think ownership. Title. I own this. Okay? Title. With a title, you have legal rights, you have responsibilities, you have control over a property. That's what a title gives you. When you say that you own a piece of property, you're the person or entity on title. I'm deliberately going slow because I want you to get this. Sub two is not hard if you understand it. Now, having said that, I've heard some people say the subject two is one of the hardest pieces of real estate you can do. But it's sweet, and I'm going to tell you why you want to do it. I'm going to tell you all the benefits, why you want to do it. And if you understand it, you'll be able to do it and do it well. All right, so title. A title can be, uh, a piece of property can be owned by an individual, it could be a corporation, it could be a couple, it could be an organization. So when we say title, it simply means ownership by someone or something. You with me so far? This thing goes a whole lot better if you participate, okay? And you can ask questions as we go along, so I want to be clear, right, as we go along. And I think I'm going to answer most of your questions. Uh, and if I don't, make sure I answer it before the end of the day. We've talked about title. Somebody tell me, what is a title? What does it mean? Ownership. That's right. When I say title, I want you to think ownership, deed. Let's talk about deed, because a lot of people say title deed. I used to say title deed. <laughs> Titles are transferred by deeds. So when I say deed, I want you to think transfer. Transfer. All right? And a deed is a legal document that you will use to transfer ownership, title, of a property from one person to another. Okay, so title says ownership. Deed is the legal document you use to transfer ownership. Is that okay? Not too hard, right? Deed is a legal document. All right? Now, let's talk about some differences between title and deed. All right? A deed is a physical document. Yes. Yes. You can. So if you press the QR code, I'll give you my contact information. You reply back and say, can you give me a copy of whatever you want? Yeah, yeah. Because you've gotten up at 9.30 this morning to be here, I'm willing to bend over backwards to give you whatever you need. You got it. Maybe I should have prefaced with this. My mission is to help you with yours. In real estate investing, this is beautiful because we help each other. I learned from my mentor. He learned from his mentor. And some of you newbies in the room, you're learning from me today. So I'm passing it on. I'm passing on what I've learned. That's what we do here. And so when you learn how to do something really well, pass it on, would you? Yeah. You can't go to a college and learn this. So let's go on. Uh, a deed is a physical legal document. It is recorded in a courthouse. You're going to find a document. You can go and find a deed. You're going to find it in an assessor's office or, or a courthouse. All right? However, a title is not a legal document. You won't find it anywhere. It simply says ownership. It refers to ownership. Title is just a term that refers to the person or persons who own the property. But the deed is a legal document you can go and find. Are we clear on that? And I'm going to say this repeatedly many times a day, so it's very, very clear, because sub two depends on titles and deeds. Okay. Let's go on. And uh, throughout the presentation, uh, you know, I, like I said, I'm going to repeat some things so that you get it. Because at the end of the day, even this young lady is going to say, wow, this is sweet stuff. I want to go out and do a sub two. What's your name, by the way? Rosalind. Rosalind, my idea is to get you to want to do a sub two. And not, be and not be afraid. All right, so it's gone. Title and a mortgage. So we've talked about title, deed. Let's talk about title and a mortgage. A title proves who owns the property, right? 
We said a title, when I say title, I want you to think ownership. Is that correct? All right, so that's what a title is. Let's talk about a mortgage. It's a loan used to purchase a property. Is it correct? About 90% of people who purchase homes buy it with a mortgage. Other 10% buy it with cash. We as investors, we purchase properties with cash. Sometimes we purchase with mortgages too. Okay. All right, so a mortgage is what? It is a, it's a loan, right? So let's go on here. The property is pledged as collateral for the repayment of that mortgage. So you use the property and you say, yes, I will repay this mortgage. And you can use the property as collateral. Just in case I don't, you can get your money back. Clear on that? A mortgage. Now, look at the last statement here. Would you read that? Ready, read. That's a key, key point here. We're talking about subject two. See, I see that question mark on your face. We're going to get that off your face. The title and the mortgage are not connected. A lot of people think they are because they usually go together. R remember, title is ownership. And we as investors, we want to own properties, right? Sometimes we want to have control over property. But in most cases, I know in my case, I want to literally own it. I want to have title to it. Because if I own it, I've just grown my net worth. I can do anything I want to do with the property without asking anybody because I what? I own it. Now, many times people will purchase properties with a mortgage, but the two are not connected. They're not. Let's move on. That's the key point here. So then what is sub two? Subject matter today. What is a sub two then? Sub two is acquiring a piece of property subject to the existing mortgage. All right. Is acquiring a piece of property Subject to, and that's where the sub two comes from, subject to the existing mortgage, uh, but a better term to use with sellers. So don't go and say, I want to buy your house sub two. They won't understand what that means. That's the terminology we use in this room so we know what we're talking about. We use acronyms all the time. So we want to purchase things sub two. We talk about that in this room. When you talk to a buyer, don't use that term. I want to purchase your property using the existing financing. That's the terminology you want to use because they understand that. They understand there is an existing mortgage on the property. And you said, I want to buy your property uh, using, using the existing financing. That's the terminology you want to use. Is that clear? Does that make sense? You don't want to go talking to a buyer. I want to buy your house up to. They will have no clue what you're talking about. Had the people in the room probably wasn't clear on that when you came in today. So you don't want to use that terminology with sellers. Purchase, what you want to do is purchase it by taking over the existing mortgage payments. You're not taking over the existing mortgage. Did you hear that point? You're not taking over the existing mortgage. You're agreeing to make the mortgage payments. There is a difference. Ah, oh, question mark. Oh, how is, that, how is that possible? We'll explain how this is possible today. All right, so what is up to? It is taking title. Title means? Title means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We want to take title to a piece of property via a what? Deed? That's how you legally transfer ownership. Is that correct? Yes. And your rock star uh, dream team attorney is going to help you do that. All right. But you do not. Everybody say do not. Do not. You do not transfer the mortgage. You, do you want the mortgage? You don't want the mortgage. Oh, it's going to become clear. It's going to become clear. And you're going to say, wow, that's sweet. Isn't it sweet already? I'm acquiring property and I didn't even take over the mortgage. Yeah. That means I'm not tied down to that mortgage. Now, the question is, is this legal? <laughs> now, I just finished saying, don't I just finish saying, I'm a minister of the gospel. <laughs> I advertise this meeting along with Sandy. The FCC could have seen my nose. Policemen could have seen my nose. Mortgage company could have seen this notice about this meeting here today. Nobody is at the door ready to arrest me. Is sub to legal? Don't get us when we walk out. <laughs> they can let me finish the presentation first. <laughs> then they've got evidence that I've taught something that's illegal, right? Then they'll arrest me. Sub two is completely legal. Would I be coming here today to show you or encourage you to do something illegal? No, this is perfectly legal. 
All right, so let's continue on. You do need to be aware of something called a do on sale clause. The, this is the thing people are so concerned about with sub two, the do on sale clause. And I'll fully explain what the do on sale clause is. What is it? Prior to 1982, banks, mortgage companies sometimes would take people um, to court uh, because they transfer a title but didn't transfer the mortgage. Now, I said the title and the mortgage are not connected. Remember I said that? And you can transfer a title without transferring the mortgage. Is that correct? In fact, under sub two, that is what we want to do. Back in the day, prior to 1982, when people did this, mortgage companies, banks sometimes would take, uh, you know, sue people because they transferred the title but didn't transfer the mortgage. They didn't even ask the mortgage company, uh, can I acquire the property? And you don't have to ask them because they're not connected. Remember I said that? Title and the mortgage are not connected. So the mortgage companies, they call that the alienation clause. Whenever you move title, not move the mortgage, mortgage companies don't like that. Can you see why they don't like that? Yeah, they, they don't like that. So the mortgage companies, uh, they have uh, uh, big lobbies. And so they actually lobbied and got this rule changed. In 1982, this gone St. Germain Act came out that says that uh, alienation clauses are now enforceable. So now when they took somebody to court, they could make them or they can make the, them pay the mortgage to the person who took the title over. And we as real estate investors, we want to do creative things. How about you? I mean, some, some real estate investors don't like the creative stuff. I, man, personally, I love the creative stuff. I love it. I love it. On every deal I'm looking for, wow, how can I work this in my favor? How can I work this so I'm paying the least amount of money up front? How can, I acquire, how can I acquire a property with no cash or credit? Or get them to pay me. Yeah, that's even better. Okay, there you go. So I like the very creative stuff. And sub two is one of those uh, creative things that you can do. So we have to be aware of this do on sell clause because now in every mortgage, and you know, the mortgage paper is about that thick. You and I, when we buy properties, we only need two pages. But for a mortgage, they have all of these clauses in there to protect themselves. And one of the clauses is the do and sell clause. So you and I need to be aware of that, right? When we're purchasing properties subject to the existing finances. And I'll show you how to do that today safely. All right, so uh, on the do and sell clause requires a borrower to pay the mortgage balance immediately upon the transfer of the title. So that's what the do on sale clause says. Anytime you transfer a title, I'm going to call the mortgage due. As an investor, is that what you want? No. Absolutely not. Let's say there's a house that costs $350,000. Well, let's say the mortgage is $350,000. And I get the current owner to transfer a title to me and take over the mortgage payments. If the bank finds out about it, they could call that no due, and I am faced with paying the bank $350,000 immediately. Is that something we want? Do we jump up and cheer for that? <laughs> Absolutely not. That's not what we want. However, mortgage companies do want to protect their interests, right? And we as investors, we want to protect our interests too. So that's what the class is about today, how to protect you so that you can do some creative things like this legally. Okay? All right. Do a sale clause. Most mortgage companies don't enforce it, though. That's a nice thing. This is why we can do this, because the mortgage companies don't enforce it. I, I, I can show you some examples where they don't enforce it. How many of you have sat down with your attorney and set up a trust? Well, I've done that. Sometimes the attorney will recommend that you put your properties in a trust rather than keeping a property in your personal name. That's why as an investor, we recommend that you put your properties in an entity, an LLC, for uh, asset protection. Well, your personal attorney I may encourage you to do the same thing for your personal properties that's very valuable, such as a house. However, anytime you do that and transfer the title from your personal name into a trust, you just violated the do on sale clause. So why would an, an attorney recommend that you do this? Because they know the bank is not gonna enforce it. Oh, and they don't. Banks don't enforce that. They know that the people have properties. They want to protect it very uh, different ways. 
and they have attor personal attorneys who recommend some things to them for their betterment so that their property, especially if it's very expensive, is protected, more protected than just in their name. That's why I use an investor. I know a lot of investors purchase properties in their personal name. We highly recommend that you form an entity and put the property in the entity for asset protection. And so attorneys also recommend this as well. And guess what? The banks don't enforce it. Yes. Can you purchase the property directly uh, with an LLC rather than going to your name and then transferring it to the LLC? Say that again. Can, can you purchase the property yes. with the LLC yes. right off the bat? Yes. Okay. That's what we recommend. Okay. When I mentor students, I also mentor students. One of the first things we recommend you do is you, if you don't have an entity, set up your entity and we have you set up your entity. From here on out, even if you're a wholesaler, do your business through your entity. That's what we recommend okay. that you do. That's good. Yes, in the back. The Zen business is offering, that's why I got my LLC too. They're offering others um, a free LLC business. So anybody who's bored of waiting to get the LLC started, start having this time this month. Awesome. Zen business. Zen, Yes. So I was wondering about the number of LLCs. For example, you might set up one for your business. Yes. And then after you purchase a property, you may want to put the property in a separate LLC. Okay. Is that advisable for um, each property to have its own separate LLC and then the company to have an LLC as well? Remember my disclaimer clause? I'm doing general teaching today. I have to sit down with you, or an attorney would need to sit down to you specifically to see what's good in your specific situations. For some people, having multiple entities is a great thing. For some other people, you only want, want to put them in one. So for some people, they may put three to five properties in an entity, and as their properties grow, they'll put some in. That's why you need to sit down with an attorney and an accountant to encourage you uh, to do what's best in your specific uh, situation. But to answer your question, yes, you can do that. Is it advisable for you? I don't know. We'd have to sit down and really see what's, what will work best in your situation. Yes? It's kind of like a, the same question, but in terms of like, like if you're a first time home buyer, uh -huh. for an example, um, you can still use an LLC. Because the reason why I asked that question is because uh, most times they said that you have to purchase a property in an LLC before you can transfer it into an LLC. Purchase. No, it's just saying it doesn't matter. Abso absolutely not. Absolutely not. Uh, as I mentioned, I mentor students. And we recommend for asset protection that you create an entity and you do your real estate investing as a business. If you do, your, when you do your real estate investing in your personal name, you're subject to all kinds of suits. And while people are suing you, they can take your personal home. Do you want, do you want your business, do you want anything that could occur in your real estate business to affect you personally? My wife certainly don't. <laughs> Serious? No, my my wife likes her personal home. It's nesting. I never want to put that at risk because I'm in a business. So no, I don't want to put my real estate business in my personal name. A lot of people do. <clears throat> That's just not my recommendation. Did I answer your question? Uh, that does. And then I have a student that's kind of like confusing with something. So after. You, you, can, you can purchase properties <clears throat> in your personal name. A lot of people go to their own personal bank, credit union, to do that. There are investor loans as well. My company provides a DSCR loan. We require that you buy it in your entity, not, not in your personal name, because we know you're an investor. Let's act like investors. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's go on. Okay. So here's one instance where banks don't enforce doing sale calls. Do you realize that um, the bank has the right, how many homeowners in here? Do you realize the bank can call your no due if you miss a payment? Yeah. If you missed a payment or two, do you realize your mortgage company has the right to call that note due? Mm, did, you, did you know that? Because of the doing sale clause. 
and, and you sign the mortgage payments, you say you're going to pay on time, and they have this due on sale clause in there. You may not have read it, but they say we have the right to call your note due under certain circumstances, such as missing a payment or two. Do the banks enforce it? No. They'll let you miss four payments before they even start the pre-foreclosure process. The point I'm trying to make is, even though the banks have the right to exercise the due on sale clause, they don't automatically do it. And, I, and I'm giving you cases where they don't. You can, you can <clears throat> how about through COVID? There, I know people who missed two years of payments <clears throat> and they didn't call the no due. So they, ha they have the right, the, the due and sell clause is there, it says they have the right to call the no due. But in many cases they don't, which is good for us because we want to exercise sub two. <laughs> right? But we don't want them to call the, uh, the no due. All right, here's another instance. Uh, and this goes back to your question over there. Let's say you purchase a property in your own personal name, okay? And then you came to a class like this and somebody said, you should be, as an investor, you should be, buying your properties and putting your properties in an LLC for all the protection that, uh, protections that an LLC provides you. And then you <clears throat> transfer through a real estate attorney. You say, hey, I want to transfer my investment properties into my entity. And your dream team attorney can do that very easily. And you transfer the property. Guess what? You just violated the do and sell clause. And they have the right to call that no do. Do they? But they have the right. I'm going to ask a dangerous question. How many rooms have done that? B bought properties in, in their name and then transferred it to their LLC. Y you can do that. In fact, a lot of real estate agents start that way. I buy them my own personal name. They come to a class like this and say, I need, to, I need an LLC. I need to be doing my business in an LLC. So start transferring. You just violated the due on sale clause. Okay. I just gave you three instances where mortgage companies can exercise the due on sale clause. Typically, they don't. Now, here's a, let's take a hypothetical. Let's say you got all excited about sub two. You went out today, you found you a case <clears throat> where someone was in foreclosure or pre-foreclosure. You work the property and say, hey, I will purchase your property. Uh, using the existing finance, and they say, okay, I'm behind, this is just tough, can you help me out? I don't want my credit to be uh, tore up, because the mortgage is in my name. When I stop paying the mortgage, guess what, it goes to my credit. It's, it's, it's making my credit score lower. And we, as problem solvers, we say, we, I can help you with that. I'd love to be able to purchase your property from you, subject to, or, sorry, we use that in here, using the existing financing. <laughs> That's the terminology you want to use, okay? And let's say you bring the mortgage current, all right? And let's say you make the payment on the first of the month, every month. You know, sometimes when you own a personal home, they give you until the 16th or 17th to make the payment. And so a lot of times we wait until the 15th to make the payment. No, as an investor, you're going to make the payment when? You're going to make it on the first of the month. So as an investor, you come in, you save this family, you bring the mortgage current, and you start making the payments on the first of the month by automatic payment because as an investor, that's what you do. You run a smooth operation here. Yeah. <clears throat> now, is the mortgage going to call that note due? What do you think? You're, you're paying the mortgage better than the person they wrote the mortgage in the name <laughs> of. Are they going to call your note due? Seriously, mortgage companies, they're not in the business of calling notes. They're not in the business of doing that. Can they? They can. But they're, they're not in the business, yes, of calling notes too. Yes? Hey, um, so when you take open that mortgage, you, it's going to be in their name. Yes. The people that you're going to speak to. Mm -hmm. You just go online and change. You don't change anything. You just, they give you their password, and then you start paying them? Excellent question, but I don't answer it later. I have a okay. slide on it later, but I'll answer it. Okay, Call you. me on it. Bring the question back if I don't answer it, okay? But I think, I'm, I think I have a slide on that coming up. Mortgage companies, they're not in the business of, of calling notes. They're not in the business of searching who changed titles either. Can they? They can. Under certain circumstances, they might. But typically, do they? The answer is no, they don't. 
What are mortgage companies in the business of doing? Making money. Exactly. They're in the business of making money. Let me show you an example. All right. How many people when they were in school that hated math and will admit it? Okay. For a moment, we're going to look at some math because this is an excellent illustration of why you want to do sub two. I want you to understand how mortgages work. Amortization. Let's look at this. Uh, in Suffolk right now, uh, the average house, average sale price of houses are around three hundred fifty thousand dollars. So let's just assume, hypothetically, uh, let's look at a house that was, uh, that was purchased and the mortgage is three hundred fifty thousand dollars, <throat> an interest rate of five percent over thirty years. <clears throat> in that case, the principal and interest. We're not talking about taxes, and insurance, because banks. They don't control that, but they do control the principal and interest. So the principal and interest is 1879. You with me so far? We're just looking at uh, a mortgage. You with me so far? All right, so let's move on. 1879. Don't freak out on me. This is an amortization uh, schedule. So that means of that 1879 payment, $420.54 will go against the principal, will reduce the principal on the first payment, and... Uh, $1,458.33 is being paid to the bank. I hear somebody say, that's terrible. Th three times as much money goes to the bank as goes against that principle. It's demonic. I hate that. On the very first payment, most of the money is going towards uh, paying the interest to the bank. So over the first uh, 12 months, You'll reduce the principal by $5,000, and guess what? $17,000 that first year is going to the bank as interest. Now, do you understand why the banks have the biggest uh, buildings downtown? Absolutely. They're making buku profit off of people, legally. <laughs> yeah. They, Year loans? It's a 30 year mortgage, yes. It's a 15 year loan. That's the first mistake. That helps. For 15 year loans help. But typically, most people get a 30 year mortgage. So I, I just want you to, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this. Okay? We're not off topic. I'm coming back. So, so hang on with me. Yes? No, just keep going. I, I just... <laughs> All right, so let's move on. All right, so uh, let's take the same scenario, but let's say the interest rate is now 10%. I am not prophesying. I, I, I know they're saying the Fed is going to take the interest rate up some more next week. I know they're saying that. This is a hypothetical answer for teaching purposes. Okay? Let's assume that same mortgage is now at 10% over 30 years. Look at what the principal and interest went to. We're not even talking about tax insurance. It went from 1879 to $3,072 because the interest rate changed. You with me so far? Now, let's look at the amortization table. Ouch! It's even worse. I'm paying more money per month and less is coming against the principal. Did you see that? Is that demonic or what? Listen, almost $3,000 of that first month's payment goes to the bank. I'm going somewhere with this. So over the first year, <laughs> over the first 12 months, we reduced the principal about $2,000, and $35,000 of my payments the first year at 10% goes to the bank. Is that awful or what? <clears throat> so, mortgage companies, they're not in the business of calling notes, they're not in the business of searching for titles. What are they in the business of doing? And they make buku of it. They're, the point I'm trying to make is they just want to make money. So if I, as an investor, I come in and I help a family out who's behind in pre-foreclosure or in foreclosure, and I, I, I bring the note current, and I make the payment on the first of each month, you think the mortgage company is going to hate me or love me? Love Are they going to call that note due, even though they have the right to? Does that help a little bit? A little bit, just a little bit. That's right. They got to pay all these costs. They don't want to 
to go that couple to go that family to go into foreclosure, we become problem solvers. Isn't that who we are? Let's talk about the benefits of sub two. Why do you want to do this? Why do I like doing this? If anybody in the room finds a sub two and you don't want it, wholesale it to me. I, <laughs> She's laughing. I'm serious. Yeah, sure. Hey, I'm with them on no, that. I like your I, I'm serious. Any wholesalers in the room or anybody come across a put for an opportunity for this? And even if you don't know how to do it, I'll bring the contract along. And guess what? Uh, I'll make sure you get a wholesale fee because I love these. I love sub two. And let's talk about why. Some of the benefits of sub two. Excuse me? There are. In fact, there are a lot of pro properties in every city. Yeah, that's true. This is true. But primarily, this is what wholesalers do. They find good off-market deals that they're willing to sell. All right, so the benefit of sub two, you can buy without cash. We said you can purchase a property simply by transferring title. Isn't that what we said? We said that the mortgage and the title are not connected. I can transfer title without taking on that mortgage. Isn't that correct? So I just bought a property with no cash. Is that correct? So is, is this hard to do? There are various reasons. And I'll, I'll list some prospects for this. But let's talk, you know, let's have a discussion. Why would anybody want to do this? Not necessarily. Transferred out of the area. Not necessarily. What, what, what if they need to leave out of the area and don't want to put the house on the MLS? To put the, your house on the MLS, a realtor wants you to fix that house up. Well, they don't have any equity to pay the commission. Sorry. There's another example. What if there's no equity and they want to sell the house? Right. They're going to end up paying at closing. Nobody wants to uh, write a check at closing. Nobody. I mean, that deal that I'm doing right now for that 13000 the reason I'm doing that is because they had to pay In a beautiful, see, we're problem solvers. People have all kind of issues. Issues with the house, issues with their personal finances. We're problem solvers. We come and help them. Is, isn't that correct? Isn't that why you're doing this? Or are you doing this to make money? Wouldn't it be nice to do both? That's what we do. We help people, and in the meantime, we make a handsome profit. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. You, are you with me so far? We've already said the title and the mortgage are not connected. As long as the seller is willing to transfer title ownership, you've just purchased a piece of property with no money down, with no cash. And release them from their responsibility. No, their name is still on the mortgage. Their name's on the mortgage, but you have released them from making the payments. The payments are the problem. That's why they're behind because they can't make the payments anymore or they want to transfer out, move, or whatever reason. Actually, it helps them because they're going to get credit benefit of something because... That credit's going to improve because I'm making the payment on time, on their behalf. What if I don't make payments? Then you're a bad investor. <laughs> see, see, here's the point. Here's the point. If you're going to do this, you're making a promise that you will make the payments. And if you're not in writing, and if you're not willing to do this, you don't want to do sub two. You're hurting other people. And that's not what we do as investors. We help people, not hurt people. No, what I'm saying is there is a legal, you know, Yes, that, yes, yes. You, you make an obligation in writing through your rock star dream team attorney that to them, to the seller, that you will make the payments on time. We'll talk about that later. Yeah, Darren, I just have a few yes. questions. Yeah. Um, so when I used to host up property, um, just doing a research, but I know there's a investor you were saying like, like um, just for example, if they're going through a divorce, they mm -hmm. do a step two, right? Yeah. But, you know, if someone's looking for a place to rent, you know, that's my deal. Do you, is there, um, I'm trying to remember, is there like a contract or something? Something you put in the contracts of those people that are like, not necessarily users, right? But you move the couple in, right? And they're making the uh, mortgage payments. Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not. I'm all right. So, all right. So, just let's just say a couple is going through. Okay. They don't want anything to do with the property. Okay. So, you come in as an investor, an investor saying, hey, you know, I'm 
I'll go ahead and take over the uh, mortgages that Lori bought it. You have to take over the mortgage payments. 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 I'm sorry, payments. What? You will, like, move. Like, they move out the property, right? Like, yes. They move, like, somebody in because they're going yes. for a rental. Yes. And they make those mortgage payments. Yeah. Like, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a, that's the beauty of this. Right. Yeah, right. You can buy a property subject to and then have a renter pay the mortgage okay. and that's make cash flow in the, the process. Mine already has a renter in it. The one I'm, I'm purchasing. So yeah. Like, they literally already have one. Right. So you, you don't pay the automatic cash flow? No, my renter is going to pay. Okay, I'm just. Okay. That's correct. Or you can do this and flip. You can start the process, okay. right? Flip the property and then the mortgage goes away, but you still acquire the property with no money, no cash. And that's why we said sub two, you had the ability to buy with no cash. That's a benefit. So if the renter, for his um, question, if yes. the renter is paying the mortgage, cool. let's, let's use that terminology correctly. The renter is not paying the mortgage. The renter is paying you or your entity. Your entity is now paying the mortgage. And when you subtract the two, the difference, cash flow, you, you, your entity gets to keep. And that's why we're in the business of buying whole, right? right. One, one of the reasons. For cash flow. And I'm interested in high cash flow. This is one of the ways I get high cash flow. Did I answer your question? All right, so one of the benefits is to be able to buy without cash, no down payment, right? All you need is a dream team, a real estate attorney that can do this all day long. Now, not all real estate attorneys know how to do this. Not all attorneys know how to do this, and not all attorneys who say they're real estate uh, attorneys know how to do this, because the first one I bought, in fact, my first deal was a sub two. So, see, this is not hard. Even a newbie could do this. My first one was a sub two, and I took it to uh, a local attorney who said, I'm a real estate attorney, and so, uh, okay, he's got a big office, big name, so I took it to him, and he didn't, have, he didn't have a clue how to do this right. And so he's learning just like I'm learning, but we got through it and it did work. But you want to get to the point where you have a dream team, attorney who knows how to do this and do this all day long. It is a piece of cake. And my dream team, attorney, she does it all day long, not a problem. Yes. Is that their official name, dream team? No. no. <laughs> just making sure I don't use that. Yeah, are you a dream team attorney? <laughs> That's a good question. Back in March, Team Blessing Rhea, one of our meetings was we talked about having a dream team around you that you can leverage to help grow your business. Because we're not experts in everything. We're not experts in legal. We're not experts in accounting. We're not experts in insurance. A lot of things we're not experts in. We're, we're experts in making money through real estate, but we have a team around us to help us get that accomplished. So we put together what we call our dream team, our best attorneys, our best insurance brokers, uh, best um, uh, wholesalers, the best uh, real estate agents to work with that are investor savvy. And we built ourselves a dream team that we passed around to, to everybody within our group. So that's why we're calling a dream team attorney because they know what they're doing. And they're helping us, not hurting us, and not slowing us down. And I found that my first <laughs> attorney who called himself a real estate attorney didn't have a clue of, of how to do this. <laughs> And we got through it. <laughs> it was a flip, so we didn't keep it long. So if there was something wrong with it, nobody ever found out. They never messed with us because we didn't keep it for six months. So if you don't flip, you know, you buy it, and then it's, it's over when yeah, you sell it. People who don't know what they're doing cost you money. That's true. Uh, That's true. That's why we spent a whole session on building a dream team. And so we went around the room saying, hey, who's your best attorney? Who's your best insurance broker? And we collected and we said, these are the best people we're going to work with. So that's why we call them dream team. Okay, let's go on. Another benefit, you can buy without credit. We said that uh, you purchase by transferring the title, right? Yep. Anybody ask for my credit? Anybody pull my credit? Did the mortgage come to pull my credit? They don't even know I did it. How are they going to pull my credit? No, nobody's going to check your credit. Is this sweet or what? Yeah. Is this sweet? All right, I need to settle down. Sometimes I get excited about something, too. I just, I just bought a piece of property with no cash and no credit. That's sweet. Okay, another benefit. You can buy without credentials. 
That means you can purchase a property again by transferring the title, right? Isn't that how sub two works? I purchase a property simply by asking the seller, are you willing uh, to transfer the title ownership to me? Uh, and I'm going, I guarantee that I will make your mortgage payments going forward. And if they say yes, you transfer the title of the property, you own the property. And here again, nobody asks you uh, for credit and no mortgage company is going to qualify you for a mortgage because you're not getting a new mortgage. You're using the existing mortgage. That's why, that's why I corrected you a moment ago. We're not taking over the mortgage. We're taking over the mortgage payments. The mortgage remains in the previous owner's name. And we'll get to that. I know there's still a question about that. We'll talk about that. Yes. How long? How long will it stay in the previous owner's name? As long as I own the property sub two. As long as I want to do a sub two. I could refinance, right? I could flip it. That gets rid of the mortgage. But if I decide, I'm the owner now, right? I own title. I own title, which means I control the property. I can keep this sub two going for the remaining 30 years if I wanted to. Your credit, your credit benefits because I'm making payments on your behalf on time. No, and, if, and I'm, if I'm you, if I'm the investor, you're I'm the, the investor. investor. Yes. And it's in there. The mortgage is in their name. Yes. I have the title. Yes. How does my credit? It doesn't affect you. Yeah. I need to get other properties and and um, do other stuff. Well, here again, we 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 encourage investors, prosperity one. We encourage investors to buy not in your personal name, yeah. so you don't need your personal credit, yeah. you buy it on behalf of your entity. So your credit doesn't matter. I, I offer DSCR loans, we're not looking at your credit. We'll start with what is your credit score to get you started? Because if you got a good credit, store, credit score, we'll loan you money uh, up to 80%. Of course, you gotta come up with the other 20% somehow. Yes. debt service coverage ratio as long as your property cash flows if you've got a good deal an investor should be looking at good deals and not just a deal there's a difference between a deal and a good deal if you have a good deal for buy and hold it cash flows well in my case i'm only interested in properties that cash flow at least six hundred dollars a month that's me that's me some people like $100 a month. Some people like 200 Listen, Bigger Pocket says that if you have a buy and hold deal and after all expenses, you're cash on $100 a month, that's a good deal. That's what Bigger Pocket say. I mean, I hear you shaking your head, but that's what Bigger Pocket say. They're the, big, they're, they're the biggest website for real estate investors. They, they have the biggest podcast. For real estate investors, and they say if you make hundred dollars a month, it's a good deal. They say if you make two hundred dollars a month with all expenses, I got to keep saying all expenses because a lot of landlords don't include all the expenses. You include all the expenses, you're still making two hundred dollars a month. They say, man, that's a home run. Bigger Pocket said that. That's what they say. I'm only happy if I'm making six hundred dollars a month at least. Mm -hmm. right, just, so, having said that. I can get a DSCR loan because this property performs. It's going to pay the mortgage and the investor is going to have a lot of money left over. Therefore, my underwriters are willing to give me an investor loan for this. Does that make sense? And it has nothing to do with my personal credit. Again, we start you off to see if your credit is good enough to give you 80% uh, LTV, loan to value. Is there a question? Y'all asking a lot of good questions, but you realize this is elongating the presentation. But okay. but these are great questions, by the way. Go ahead. Ask. No, go ahead and ask the question. I'll speed up. Just the, the, the DSCR, um, the, the 800 uh, cash flow, what if you don't have the renters in there yet? How can you get it? I mean, besides comps. You, there, are, there are different places you can go and see what the average rent okay. is for so that neighborhood, that, that type of house. It is much better if you already have a renter in. And then we can prove it. You have a document. You have a legal document that says this is what the rent is, right? And we already know what the mortgage is going to be, what the taxes and insurance are, so we can calculate uh, what cash flow is. Does that make sense? Okay, so you can buy without cash, credit, or credential. Let's go back to amortization. Okay, so 
you guys that don't like math, bear with me a little bit because there's another benefit here. In order to be an engineer, you must like math and science. I always liked math and science. So my counselor said, you need to consider engineering. I, could, I was considering becoming a lawyer or going into engineering. They encouraged me to go into engineering, so I went into engineering. I, I like math. That's why I like the creative financing stuff. So bear with us a moment here as I get this next benefit out. Let's look at this again. A benefit is you can purchase a property with a paid down mortgage. See, so I you know where I'm going with this. Let me make this clear. Let's go back over here to this example. $350,000 mortgage, 5% interest, 30 year mortgage, principal interest is 1879. Okay, we looked at this before and we said the first month's payment is going to be that. It's going to be split that way. Remember we said that? Remember we said that? Yes, no. Do you remember that? Okay, this is the very first payment. First year, $5,000 is reduced on the principal and interest of $17,000 goes to the bank. Let's take the next scenario. Let's look at this mortgage 15 years down the road. What happens 15 years down the road? This is the beauty of the amortization table. And if you understand this, you'll see another benefit in here of sub two. You are buying properties that somebody else has already paid the mortgage down for you. And, and in year 16 now, guess what? $888.90 is being reduced from their principal. And as you continue, more and more money reduces the principal faster. Isn't that beautiful? Now your money's working for you. The farther this gets down in the amortization table, the more it works for you. That's sweet. Okay, so now after year 15, now $10,000, $11,000 comes against the principal for that year. Only $11,000 goes to the bank. Now, you wait one more year. After year 16, there's going to come a point here where, wow, now more of my payment is coming against my principal and less is going to the bank. Woohoo! This is awesome. I don't want my money going to the bank as interest. I want, I want my payments to benefit me. Yes. If the property is worth that much, right? Yes. I mean, because the, the, the previous owner could have bought the property for 500000 You come along, do the sub two. It's actually not worth 500000 anymore. I don't know. Does that even happen? Why would it not be worth $500,000? I don't know. In most cases, houses appreciate. And us as a real estate investor, we're not going to get into a bad deal. So we're going to see, is this a good deal? First of all, okay. we're not going to just do it to do it. Gotcha. It needs to be a good deal. Gotcha. And so I'm purchasing a house where the payments make sense for the value of it. Gotcha. And typically, the value of houses go up. Can it come down? Yes. Can it come down? Can 2008, 2009 happen? But I'm told that years like 2008, 2009 only happen every 70 years. So I'm not expecting that to happen anytime soon. What's that? Again. What's actually happening right now? But not at the rate of 2008. Well, Go ahead. people overpaid. Yeah. And actually, there were a lot of problems in 2008. Question? Actually, to her question, you're really pointing it out at the top there where you say after 16 years. Yes. Yes. That's what we're but, but what I'm saying, is if somebody has already paid they down 15 pay. years, you come in a year 16, you purchase a property uh, according to the existing mortgage, this is the benefit you get. Right. You don't start all over again right. where your payments go mostly to the bank. You come in where most of the payments are now going towards you, which now builds your equity. In the sweet spot. You come in now with sweet Absolutely. Spot. Where this scenario could happen. Somebody is in a distressed situation, maybe an older person is going into a senior living situation or whatever, an investor has come along and said, oh, I'll offer you 25% less than your house is worth, and they've totally insulted them. And you come along and say, I like your house. It's beautiful. It's exactly what I'm looking for. I will take, I will use the expression you used, and you get it for no money down, and you haven't insulted them, 
and you pick it up, put our money down. That's where you get this deal. Yes. Yes, I agree. Uh, to, to answer what you're saying, too, let's say that, that it was high. Let's say it was $500,000, right? And before the mortgage, is your tenant paying the mortgage off? Because regardless of the situation, it would be cash flow. So uh, if, you took over, if you took it over that loan, remember, as the years go on, all the property value is moving up. So it, it, it's good. you're going to increase it. No matter what, you're, you're getting a house for free. Uh, and you're, you're taking over a payment that you're not even paying because you have the tenant paying it. And you're cash flowing. Did you all just hear that? Yeah. Did you all just hear that? Did you hear that? Yes. It's reducing the balance, the mortgage balance quicker, yeah. and equity is the difference between the value of the house and what you owe on the house. It gets sweeter the farther down in this uh, amortization table you get. Yes. And when you're talking about 15, 16 years, the monthly mortgage amount could even be less than what we're accustomed to seeing. Correct. Because that was 15 years ago. Right. And they were paying prices at 15 years ago, which were lower than what they are today. And I love what he said over here because there are seven benefits, right, to real estate investing, especially the long term. You might not even be so concerned about the appreciation or the value at this point, but if it cash flows, that might be what I'm interested in. It all depends on what you're trying to get out of the deal, right? So even in your scenario, even if the value of the house has come down somewhat, if you put a renter in there that's paying more than the payments, you're making cash flow, and that might be what you're interested in. Because, because you got in with little or no money, so you're creating money. You just created a machine that produces money for you. I've got a question. So, yes. Question. Yeah. Can, so does that mean um, subject to works better after 15 years of work? Yes. Uh -huh. See, yeah. see that? The light bulb just came on. It gets sweeter the older the mortgage is. So you have to target those uh, mortgages? Not necessarily. Because what I'm saying is if you target like two years old mortgage, mm -hmm. is that going to that gonna work like that, right? It won't work this sweet, but they'll actually be easier to do if it's only two years on the mortgage. Because you got to remember, after 15 years, right, there's a lot of equity in this house. And the seller may not want to give up that equity without yeah. you coming up with some cash up front. Okay. Unless, of course, it's a death or a divorce. Yes. That's correct. That's correct. Yeah. There could be some extenuating circumstance. They're just desperate. I want to get out. I just want to get out. I just want to move. I don't want, want to deal with this. I can't make the payments anymore. So there are certain circumstances way down here, 15 years. That's really sweet if you can get one of these with a 15-year-old mortgage and not come up with any cash. That's really sweet. Was there another question? No, I was just going to say that's where I hear all that creativity that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's really fun if you can think about how all the different ways that you can do it. Are you saying math is fun? <laughs> <laughs> After 16 years, 12,000 reduces the, the uh, principal. Now the interest, you're only paying 10,000. So wow, it gets sweet. It gets better here on out. Okay, more of your money goes against the principal. So uh, the benefit is you can purchase a property with a pay down mortgage. This is awesome. I don't, I'm not aware of any other way of purchasing a property that's this sweet. Okay, and the older the mortgage, the more each new payment reduces the balance. Make sense? All right, which means your wealth grows faster, right? That's why we're holding properties, right? Because they're continuing to appreciate and the mortgage continue to go down. The equity builds on each property. 
This is sweet, man. This, this is why I'm in real estate investing. Let me give you an example. Uh, this is a house that I purchased uh, sub two. Okay, the house didn't look like that when I bought it. It looked much worse than this when I bought it. This is after the rehab. Uh, an investor bought this house 15 years previously. And the investor was supposed to do something with it, flip it or whatever. Never did anything. Never rented it out. And the house just sat there and deteriorated. After 15 years, a wholesaler came by and said, you want to sell this house? And he said, yeah, I just want to get out. Because he was retiring. Didn't want this debt anymore. He's still paying the mortgage, remember? He said, I just want to get out. And didn't he want any money for it? Here's, here's the situation. He just wanted to get out. He said, I just want to sell the house. And he's selling the house by simply transferring title. All right? And you see, he has paid down the mortgage for 15 years. So I get to pick it up in year 16. I see the advantage of what we just finished talking about. Sub two. Uh, let's see. So each new payment that I made reduced my mortgage a lot faster, which builds my wealth. Isn't that sweet? This is an actual example. This stuff works today. All right. So another benefit, instant equity. Likewise, when you buy a house that has a paid down mortgage, guess what? You get instant equity the moment you take over the property, right? Yes. And take over the and agree to take over the mortgage payments. Not the mortgage, but the mortgage payments. You get instant equity. Let me give you an example. Again, this is a house, this is the first house that I purchased up to. The house did not look like this when I purchased it. Uh, this was a person who just wanted to get out of the house. In fact, uh, the person was getting older. The daughter wanted her to come and live with her. They didn't want to fix up the house and put on the MLS. They said, I just want to get out. All right? In fact, this house had... Well, thank you. This house had plants growing up here in the gutter. So Because the husband had died and she wasn't going to get up on a ladder and clean the gutters. She just wanted to get out, go move with the daughter. Okay? So here's an example. I bought a sub two. The mortgage was 146000 The value of the house was two hundred five. Guess what? At closing, I picked up instant equity of $59,000. You guys see that? The difference between the value of the house and the mortgage is the equity. I own it because we transferred title through a deed. We Not didn't transfer. for an investor, but great for a subject to. Yes. Immediately. On that particular day we closed... My wealth went up immediately $59,000. Now, what if I did that 10 times this year? Mm -hmm. That's how you build wealth. Question, they didn't want any of that 59000 They wanted some money, some, they wanted some money. So, we, so we agreed that I would give her $12,000 in addition to making the mortgage payments. They realized the property like, was not well maintained? Or yeah, yeah, they, out. Yeah, yeah, they knew, knew that. Let's go back. Let's go back. Okay, so the equity was 59, subtract out the 12,000, okay, that I gave her for the right, the privilege. So I paid her some money for the privilege to purchase a house using existing finances. So did I answer your question? You do what you need to do to get the deal, okay? So this is not a no cash. I paid some cash, but it was worth it for me. Because I bought a house without getting a loan, without using my cash, without, provide, without looking for another private lender. I used the existing financing. That's what sub two is, purchasing using existing and when did finances. you have to give her the cash? At closing. Okay, so you did give cash then out of your pocket, but you're sort of... Out of my entity's pocket. Entity, so you're folding it into that equity, though, so that's... Yes. Yeah. Yes. Questions? You do what you have to do. I mean, all of these are not no cash. They have the opportunity to be no cash. But I do, as an investor, I do what I need to do to get the deal. Because you don't have an agreement until you agree. The, the seller wants something. I want something. At the point we both get what we want, that's when we have an agreement. We have a contract. Yeah, I don't, I don't have a contract if I'm saying, no, I'm only going to purchase your house with zero cash house. She, she would have kept saying, no, 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 no. I don't have a deal. I wanted the deal. And so I gave her what she wanted. And she gave me what I wanted. All right. So the benefits of sub two 
They buy with no cash, no credit, no credentials. You get a paid out mortgage with build your wealth faster and you get instant equity. Uh, not a bad deal, right? Anybody want to do something too? Yeah, okay. See, I made a believer. I, some of you, I'm still working on you. <laughs> uh, all right, so who are the, I know we've been going along so far. I'll speed up a little bit. So who are the prospects? How do you find people for sub two? All right, that's fine. Anybody who wants and need to sell fast, right? Because the investors, we say we close in as little as two weeks, not two months, because we don't need to get approval for a mortgage, right? All right, so really anybody who needs to sell, want to sell fast, need to sell fast, need to get out of Dodge, they're moving, traveling, whatever. We can get this thing done in two weeks, not two months, because there's no mortgage involved, no mortgage approval, right? Any questions about that before we go on? I'm trying to speed up a little bit because I know I've been going for a little long. Just really quick, I'm sorry. Yes. Um, you would definitely go do some kind of, um, uh, shoot, I lost the word, where you're valuing the house. Yes. Right? Yeah. Before any of that or in this process? Okay. You, you do what an investor would normally do. You investigate. Okay. You see if this opportunity makes sense. Okay. You do your analysis. If it makes sense, then you figure out how you're going to buy it. You could buy it all cash. I believe in OPM using other people's money. <laughs> this is one way of using other people's money. In this case, I'm using the mortgage company's money. Okay. Which we always do, but in this case, they haven't approved it. We just went in and took it. Yeah, we, we just agreed to make the payments on behalf of the person the note was written for. Okay, let's move on. So who is another prospect? Somebody who wants to list price. Okay, let's talk about this. We can pay you. I, I'm willing to pay list price. It's almost going back to the gentleman over here. Sometimes the investors, we're stuck up on price. I'm only going to buy this price. Or sellers, they're stuck on price. No, I'm not going to discount $5,000. I need list price or better, period. So as an investor, and if I can use sub two, is my tool for buying the house, I say, okay, Mr. or Mrs. Customer, I will pay you list price as long as you give me my terms. And my terms is I'm purchasing your property using the existing finances. Do we have a deal? Because I've already analyzed things, and if it makes sense for me, for whatever reason, it might be cash flow, if it, whatever it makes sense for me to be able to buy it, it may be uh, advantageous for me to buy it with no cash. Whatever the benefit is to me, if we can agree upon that, I'll pay you list price. I see you're stuck on list. No problem. I'll give you list. Give me terms. As long as you give me terms, I'm willing to pay you up to. Now I'm not going to just say, okay, I'm going to pay you list. I'm willing to pay you up to list. We're still going to try to negotiate it out. But I'm willing to pay, go up to list as long as you give me my terms. Because with my terms, I've already analyzed this. This can be a good, as long as it's a good deal. You, you don't want to buy anything that's not a good deal. But I've already analyzed it for whatever reason. I'm getting cash flow. I know the house is going to appreciate. I'm getting a built-in instant equity. There's some reason I want this house. If there's a benefit to buying this house, I may be willing to pay you up to less. So who are the prospects for sub two? If the person can't sell the house because they are stuck on list, then I'm willing to come in with this. I'm willing to pay you up to less if you assign the house using the existing financing. They become a prospect for me, okay? Expired listings. There's a reason why this house didn't sell. It costs too much. They're asking too much in the wrong location. Condition of the house is not good. There's some reason why this house didn't sell. I'm willing to purchase this property from you at your price, again, as long as you give me my terms, right? I'm willing to pay you up to less, even in this high interest rate market. Now, I've already analyzed this. This is a good deal for me to buy this, even at less. There's some reason why I want this house, and I can make this work. I'm willing to buy it, but you got to give me my terms. No yes? Realtor here. Excuse me? You're not using no. a realtor. Here. No realtor. Yeah, no realtor. That's correct. I'm using my two-page contract, my two-page sub-two contract. My regular investor contract doesn't work here. Can I you may. When you refer to the list price, are you saying, like, if I have a house, uh, the mortgage is 100, I only owe 150, but Zillow is saying it's worth 200, I want 200 for it. Is that what you're talking about when you say list price? 
It's got to make sense. Uh, I'm assuming that your list is somewhere around ARV, not twice ARV. It's not going to make sense for me to pay twice what the ARV is. But usually the list price is somewhere around ARV. So I'm saying, you know, as long as it makes sense. To, to, to me, the way I rent, I get high cash flow. So I'm willing to pay you up to list if you give me my terms. There's an advantage for me to buy your house with little or no money cash. Because money costs, costs money. If I'm using my own money, I could have used that money for some other deal. Instead, I'm locking it here. If I borrow the money from another money lender, I'm paying interest for that. If I'm using a hard money lender, if I'm going to a bank, money, money costs. So it may be to my advantage to acquire your house using the existing finances. I don't have to use my credit. My, because, you know, if you buy enough houses in your own name, you're going to get to a point where debt to income is not going to allow you to buy any more. Yes. This will never go to my debt to income ratio. Never. Never. Because I'm never putting the mortgage in my name. It's not even in my entity's name. Me or my entity is never bogged down by the, this additional financing that I'm using. This is like free financing just came out of the air. This is a beautiful thing. Because you know, in order to be a good investor, you need good deals and you need money. You have to have the both. You can have all the good deals you want. If you don't have money to buy it, it doesn't do you any good. You can have lots of money and can't find a good deal. You need both, right? So I need a good deal, and I need the financing. This is one way to get the financing. Can I ask another, yes, another you may. You can only ask one more question. Just right. kidding. Oh, this is the last one. So no, no, seriously, I'm joking. Zillow says 200. Yeah. You come in and tell me, hey, but that's the ARV. The status of the property right now is worth about 170. I'm willing to pay that. Is that what the conversation would be like when you're saying paying us to list? No, what I'm saying is they've already put this house on the MLS. It's expired. It's been on there three, four months. Oh. It didn't sell. It's now off the MLS. I'm look, as an investor, I'm looking at expired listings. So I go to this person, I say, hey, listen, you weren't able to sell your house. For well, I, I know there, I can probably figure out why the reason is. You know, condition, location, asking too much, whatever. If it makes sense to me, I'd be willing, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Customer, to buy your house from you at the price you want it. That's going to make them happy, right? Because some people are stuck on price. Some people don't want to give up $5,000. No. Some people have sentimental value on their properties. They think it's worth more than what it is. I'm willing to help you feel good about your sale. I, I will purchase your property from you at list. Of course, I've done my analysis. still makes sense as long as you allow me to purchase using existing finances. As long as they say yes, and it, and it works out in my analysis, I'm buying it. I'm running a contract, we're gonna close, it's gonna be my property. It, it, he's not finished, go ahead. Oh, and, you okay. pay, and then you're just gonna pay the difference between the existing mortgage and whatever the list price is. I'm gonna to continue to make the payments, because that's what I agree to do, to make the payments. And pay the, the sellers the difference between the mortgage and the mortgage. So that means that would have to be a good deal for me to pay him the difference, that's correct. Okay. That's right. So that's what, that's what you got, you asked the right question. That's right. It, but I, through my analysis, it would still have to be a good deal right. for me to do that. You wouldn't even call and ask me that. That's correct. That's correct. I wouldn't even go out there and. Excuse me? That's your $12,000. That was a $12,000 yeah, in that other case. Yeah, that's correct. You're buying them out directly. That's, that's correct. That's correct. Can I just make a comment here? Yeah, go ahead. When I was uh, working in residential real estate, one of the things, and I was the top agent out of 4,800 agents, I specialized in expired listings, and nine times out of 10, it wasn't the property. It was that the agent who had the property listed didn't know how to market the property. I would invariably sell that property within three weeks after listing. Well, it was never the property. Never. So the so agent how does that help us? They weren't, they weren't marketing, marketing at first. They weren't marketing at first. Yeah. No one knew it was the same. That was hardly ever the problem. The property was hardly ever the problem. Yes. So, so do you go after a lot of um, owner financing houses? Uh, I do rent to own, but I don't do owner financing. No, no, no. You go after a lot. For instance, like one, one yes. of my, yes, yes, yes. I, I noticed this when we got done with the meeting yes. last time, we were you know, looking for the deals. 
drove down a uh, road. This, or there's a house there. He originally put up there uh, for sale by owner. Yeah. So I was immediately going to call him and, and do and do this uh, work on this uh, this subject too. And, right. Um, with him, but then like, I mean, it was the next day he listed it with a real estate agent. So now I'm waiting. Yeah. I'm waiting for him to go ahead and, and, and to fall off or to expire, mm -hmm. and I'm going to call him. Yeah. Seller finance is, is awesome. Yeah. yeah, that's another way to finance your purchase. Creative financing. Another creative way of finance the purchase. I'm wondering why they, they, I mean, there's many reasons. Sometimes if they're a real estate agent, what they're supposed to do, but they're owner financing. They're doing it for a reason. Mm -hmm. They're doing it for a reason. They, they own it, they have capital gains, they own it. So what if they're, doing, if they're doing seller finances, usually the case is there is no mortgage, or the mortgage is way down there, and they're like giving you yeah. a second mortgage. Okay? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm talking about like for sale by owners. That's what I'm saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. If they're selling it by themselves, there's re usually a reason why they're selling it. Like they're trying to skip out on. You know, they're trying to, trying to save commission. Trying to save money. Or they feel like they can do this. I mean, another realtor, if they're already a realtor, yeah, they can just sell it themselves. I was just curious if you use that. And there are tools out there that help you sell it yourself yeah. to potentially save the commission. Okay, expired listings. Uh, same thing, if it's been on the MLS for months, um, again, you can be willing to pay up to list price as long as you can get your terms. Uh, sellers with little or no equity, uh, I think we talked about this one, after paying the sales commission and closing costs, they may have to walk away with the bill at the end. We prevent this, why? Because we are problem solvers. Sellers get to walk away from closing with no cost. We pay the closing cost, and that gets done. Excellent example of that is a VA loan. Because a VA loan, they purchase that with no money down, right? And what if they need to move or just want to get out or there's a divorce or whatever? Usually, there's not a lot of equity in a property. So they may have to uh, pay at closing to sell the house. Normally, people have built up enough equity. They've already put some down payment in. They built up equity over a number of years. And so they normally, most people don't have to pay at closing. In some cases, a vet will have to pay. No problem with us. We can get this done. In fact, here's a live example that I'm looking at right now. This is an example of a vet who bought the property for $339.9 last year. The VA loan is now 343. Isn't that interesting? Because of closing costs, and you put nothing down, the value of the house is now six uh, three sixty one. Okay. Uh, is this person going to be upside down in the closing table? S sales costs and closing costs. If, if this person decides to sell through a realtor, it's going to cost them thirty two thousand. Guess what? They're going to throw a check for thirteen thousand at closing. So this becomes a prospect for you, right? They've only been here a year. That's why it's upside down. They built no equity. They put no money down. So if you sell this through a realtor, plus closing costs, it's going to cost you some money. No problem with us, however, right? We come in with our solution <laughs> of, uh, yeah. We bring sub two to the equation. We pay the closing costs. There is no... Uh, Realtor commissions to pay, because this is direct sale between seller and us. We simply transfer the deed. We simply transfer the title through a deed, and we pay the closing costs, and we just bought a house for some money. It, it wasn't no cash, but hey, we just purchased a house with little uh, to no cash. No credit, no credentials. And even after paying the cost, we still ended up with... Uh, uh, instant equity of $8,000. $8, Make sense? So we're talking about who the prospects of sub two is. Somebody with little or no equity, because they may have to pay a closing, you prevent that. Pre foreclosure is another one. We save the seller's credit, we bring the mortgage current, prevent foreclosure from going on the credit report. That's a good thing, right? Owner, doesn't have to pay uh, closing costs. We pay the closing costs if needed. We even give them some cash to help them move. The reason why they're in this position because they don't have enough money, right? We may need to have to move. This, this is the one that confuses me. How do you do this with no cash? Doesn't somebody have to bring the payments current? Okay, this one is going to require cash. Okay, 
Now I'm, now I'm okay. In some circumstances, you don't need any cash. But I'm going to tell you how sweet this deal is. You're going to want to pay cash. Here we go. Um, quick, also going back to VA loans. Yeah. Um, the VA does not give a new loan to that person until that loan has been paid off. So they're not going to be able to buy another house. We're we'll talking about that. Okay. <laughs> Here's an actual example that I'm looking at right now. Uh, this person uh, is in pre foreclosure and paid the mortgage. They bought it for $298. $298.9 last year. It's an FHA loan. The mortgage balance now is $290,000. Uh, she's in default three months. The value of the house is now $391. Equity of how much? Even if I've got to come up with some cash to buy this, that's still a sweet deal, right? It, it, I would suggest that's an inflated value. Excuse me? Stop showing the good stuff. Show really I'm, I'm, I'm showing you. These, these are real life examples I'm working on. Yeah, that you working on that you can find. I would double check that value. You, you, you can find these too. Okay, well, give me this. I, I, I'm telling you who, who you look for. Look for people in pre foreclosure. I guess the question is. I found this one off the MLS. This was a person trying to sell the house themselves. There's a reason why somebody was trying to sell the house themselves. Why are you not using a realtor? I made the phone call. I went over there. I talked to the person. And you find out that they're behind in their mortgage. I would suggest you double check the value because they have gone down 25%. Sales are down 25%. I'll uh, say I'll say I'm doing a on my, my personal residence right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. To pull money out to buy property or whatever. Mm -hmm. like it just went up uh, twenty six thousand dollars. My the property, my to my property. Mm -hmm. The value of my property is twenty six thousand mm dollars. -hmm. So it's still, I mean, it's still out there. Right? It just depends on the like, like it depends on the area. But, um, and like I said, I'm, I'm lucky enough. I bought my house for so cheap. Yeah, so yeah. For what I'm looking at, value uh, uh, values are still appreciating. Yeah. Yes, interest rates have gone up over the last now, two I'm or three months. It's not value there. I'm just saying I would double check the value. This is the current value. This is not old stuff I'm showing you. Well, we're back to the foreclosures. Okay. I'll go the other way. So, so, I'm willing to pay some cash. This deal is not going to require any credit. No credentials. I get an instant equity of $100,000 minus my cost. And I'm willing to come up with some costs on this. All right, so um, the benefits are little to no cash, sub to no credit, no credentials, pay down mortgage, instant equity. Make sense? Is that why you want to do it? Anybody in the room want to do it? Are you willing to do these now? Still? Still skeptical? All right. So how do you process these? Very carefully. This is where I need to take you because there's still some fear. I don't know if I want to. Let me show you how you process these. First thing you're going to need is a great sub two contract. This is neat. And let me give you some of the terms you need in your contract. Number one, a clear term that says you are buying the property or purchasing the property subject to the existing mortgage. I even put who the mortgage company is being collected by so and so. My contracts, I list clearly this is what I'm doing. I'm purchasing this property subject to the existing Mortgage. I'm clearly putting this in because the seller's not going to come back to me and try to sue me later and say they took my house and I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> I've even bought one of these from a wholesaler and the wholesaler put in bold letters. I'm buying this from you and the mortgage will remain in your name. The wholesaler is really making it clear what we're doing. You're not going to come back later and say I didn't know what I was doing. I even put a clause in here that says the seller acknowledges that the existing first mortgage will remain and is not being assumed by me, the buyer, but will be paid by the buyer. So I want to make it very clear in writing. You're not going to come back and sue me. We talked about this. We have it in writing. This is what we're doing. I'm purchasing your property, transferring title through a deed, and I'm agreeing to make your payments. I want to make this very clear. I've had this discussion, we're putting it in writing. 
I want to find, I want to put in writing what the mortgage is I'm taking over, what the mortgage balance is. At closing, the mortgage shall be no more than this. I want to know what I'm getting into. So I'm going to have a clause for that. I'm going to have a clause where it talks about what the principal and interest is. We're going to be very clear what I'm doing. I'm taking over the payments, and the payments is this amount. Remember, the seller and the buyer, us in this case, we're both signing this. And we're doing this through our rock star dream team attorney. Do you have the attorney's fees in here someplace? Yeah, then my attorney's going to get her fees. No. This is not going to be my contract. The bank's attorney's fees for the, mortgage, for the foreclosure. No, I'm going to bring them current at closing. I'm bringing this current. So this is not a no cash deal. No, but I'm saying is that in the contract someplace? Yes, the contract is going to say I'm bringing the mortgage current at closing. Including the attorney's fees right for the foreclosure. That's a, that's a good point. Maybe I, I just went through that too fast. When I acquire the property, I don't want any problems with the property. So at closing, we're clearing up everything. This house is not going to be in foreclosure anymore. I'm bringing it current. Me because the previous owner did not. But remember, if there's equity of $101,000 in there, I can afford to pay ten dollars or $20,000 or $15,000, whatever it is to take to bring it current. It's to my advantage. This is not a no cash deal, but this is a great equity deal. But the bank Re is certainly gonna know that you're taking over the loan. Not necessarily. Uh, now, now, we are gonna transfer title because uh -huh. we're gonna be completely above board. We're transferring title. Title means I own it, right? I know there's some things like land trust and it tries to get control of a property. I don't want just control, I want to own it. So literally my rock star dream team attorney is going to use a deed to transfer the ownership to my entity. I'm going to own this at the end of closing. And I'm willing to pay some money to make it current because I don't want a problem property. It's going to be current. So I'm coming up with some money to do this, but look at the instant equity I'm getting. So I'm doing this for the instant equity. I'm getting another property. It's going to cash flow. You could flip this if you want. I could wholesale this. This works for wholesaler too. You could lock down a great deal like this and put your ability to assign it in the contract. Uh, you said you do uh, more than 600 cash flow per month, right? Yes. So would you accept to do like maybe 200 per month for this one? Just because you maybe, have maybe because you have for the instant have equity. I, I, the answer would be yes. Yes, all things being equal, there's nothing else I'm concerned about, not a lot of massive repairs. Yeah. Because you have lots of equity? Yeah, instant equity. I do it for, wouldn't you? You know, seven benefits to wholesaling, you know, cash flow might be one, appreciation on another, and just instant equity. So I do it for instant equity. Is this a sub two? Yes, this is sub two. Everything I'm talking about is sub two. I think you're thinking that sub two has to be no cash. No. Virtual no, no cash. Okay. I'm thinking that the bank is clear that you're taking over this loan. That's no. an assumption. Let me let me put it this way. Let me put it this way. We're doing everything publicly and above board. And I said a while back, do banks spend their time seeing where transfer where titles have transferred? Do they spend their time doing that? No. They don't. No, of course not. Is is there a possibility they may find out? Possible. Yes. Well, they wouldn't care if the interest rates higher than what, you know, high, why would they go back anyway? But, uh, just, well, I don't want to confuse the issue. Uh, would there be a circumstance where the bank might be interested in a title transfer? Let's say we're transferring a property that had a low interest rate. Interest rates are higher now, much higher now. Let's say interest rate went to 10%, and the mortgage I'm taking over was still at 2%. <laughs> yeah. Would a bank be interested in calling that note? I don't know yet. Maybe. If they call the note, who are they calling the note on? Not calling on me because the note's not in my name. Oh. They're calling the note on the previous owner. The previous owner may or may not be able to pay. Mm. They're in a pickle, aren't they? Mm. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> You're right. They're looking at what is my probability of getting my money? Uh, Should I leave everything alone and let this investor continue to make me payments? I think I'll do that. Yes. Okay. And here's one thing I, I noticed too. I, um, I don't know if you guys know, but I can call on any of your mortgages. 
Wow. Okay, question. Yes. Are you selling this contract or are you yes. giving the you name of the attorney that wrote this contract? Excuse me? The sub two contract. Yes. Uh -huh. Are you yes. selling it or are you giving the name of the attorney that wrote the contract? Either or. I have acquired a contract through my attorneys that I use. Yes. Are I do sell that contract. I, I sell it. it. I sell it because it costs me money. Right. So are you going to give that information to people? So yes. Yes. My QR code, that's my business card. If you're interested in buying the sub two contract, I'd be willing to sell it to you. You want to give us a cost for that? In the neighborhood of $500. I'm sorry? In the neighborhood of $500. For a contract. For a contract. For a sub two contract, specifically to sub two. This is very different from your normal, normal investor contract. Normal investor contract, you don't need these terms in there. Remember now, if you're going to do this, you need to make sure it's tight, proper, because you don't want it called on you. Yes? Yes? See, I want to alleviate her fears. <laughs> and this contract alleviates her fears. Yeah. All right, so what you're going to need is a great contract with some terms in here, like buyer will pay the cost to bring the... Uh, I'm putting this in my contract. Again, it's pre-foreclosure. So if it's pre-foreclosure, I want a good property I'm acquiring with no problems. So I'm going to bring it current. And I'm going to start making the payments on the first of each month through automatic payment. I'm not even going to think about it. Every first of the month, I'm not going to wait to the 15th. I'm going to be the best customer this mortgage company has ever had. And why am I going to do that? Because no I don't want them calling the note. The reason why I'm doing this is because this is some financing that came out of the air. I didn't have to qualify for it. I didn't have to show any credentials. Right. It's a sweet deal. It's not on my name. It's not even on the name of my entity. This is free money. I have three. And I want more. So seriously, you find, uh, if you find a client, a prospect, I'd be willing to help you close it. I'll bring the contract and I'll pay you a wholesale fee. Uh, uh, to help me close it. Yes, I will. You just find a good prospect for this. I'd be willing to pay a wholesale fee for it. Or a referral fee. Even if you just say, I know of somebody, I don't want to be involved, but I'll tell you about them. I'll even pay a, a referral fee at closing. I pay referral fees up to $1,000. I'm going to pay a wholesale fee of more but than that. the deal is yours. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> or, or if you want to do a sub two, and you want my help in doing it? I'll partner with you on it. There we go. Oh, we'll just agree on what you know the split would be. Because it's $500 for a copy of a contract that an attorney would do for $250. No, I don't know of any rock star dream team attorney who no, will do I it for do. $250. Well, I need to know who you are. No, I like mine. I like mine. Question. Yes. I'm not saying my name. But it's rock solid. Do you call them up and say, hey, I'm bringing this current? No, you just do it. Like, you just do it. Oh, just, you don't have to like do anything with the bank. You just say it's $10,000. Yes, you need to know who to pay. Okay. And you need to know how much to pay okay, to bring you it current. Confirmation email like, hey, you're up. You're current. So when you close, you're going to get a power, specific power of attorney for this property. Okay. That gives you the sure. right to represent the owner to the bank. So I, immediately at closing, day after closing, I'm going to call this mortgage company and say, hey, I have a specific power of attorney. I am representing so-and-so. She has now given me the right to manage this mortgage on his or her behalf. Blah, 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 blah. Because you want to begin to make that payment on the first of each month. You need to know exactly who to call, the account number, blah, 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 and all that. I'm introducing myself to them. I'm being completely above board. That's how I recommend you do this. Yeah. Now, sub twos in the past, they've been, sub twos in the past used to do land contracts and try to hide it. And we don't want anybody to know we're doing this. <laughs> no, we're completely above board. I haven't talked about it yet. She, oh. she got ahead of me. Sorry. She got ahead of me. So what do you need? A good contract. And these, I'm just saying, we have some terms in the contract that you really need to make sure this thing is clean. And if I want to give the buyer some money at closing for the right to do this, say I'm willing to pay for it. 
I'm willing to pay a wholesaler. I'm willing to pay the seller for the right to, because why am I willing to do that? Because it's a sweet deal. I found money out of the air. And I acquired property with instant equity. I'm willing to do it. Um, reason why they're for, this is for pre-foreclosure. These are some terms that you could put in your contract. The reason why they let me buy the property because they're already having financial issues. And I'm a problem solver and I generally want to help people. Remember I said I'm a minister? If the people need help moving on to their next destination, I'm willing to pay them money to do that. I'm willing to put some money in their pocket. I'm willing to help them move. Because I don't have an agreement <clears throat> until we both agree. I want them to feel good about their sale. I want to feel good about my purchase. So I may put a <clears throat> clause in there that even allows them to stay in the property if necessary, right? So that they're comfortable with the transaction. We're not vultures. When I say we're problem solvers, I really mean that. There are people all the time who go through divorce, death, disability, financial issues. There are lots of crises. Life just happens, doesn't it? Life happens. And some people end up in a financial strait. And we as real estate investors, we get to help those people. Sometimes money will solve people's problems and we come to the table with some money to help solve problems. Record the needs. Absolutely. The yeah. Sorry. Yes, absolutely. Remember I said we're completely above board. My rock star dream team attorney is going to transfer title through a deed that gets publicly recorded. Love it. We're not hiding anything. Now, if the bank chooses uh, to call it due, we'll, we'll address that at the time. But I'm completely above board. I'm not hiding anything. I'm taking title. I own the property. I literally, my entity literally owns this property. Okay, I think I've stressed it long enough. Okay, did I miss something here? Yeah, I'll even give the seller security that I will definitely pay the mortgage on time every month. I guarantee you that. And if I don't, I give you the right to take the property back at no cost to you. Can I do more on that? I can't do any more on that. I can't do more on that. It'd be cool if I got a subject to from a dodgy person on my own home. Then they'd probably be default and I would just get my home back. And then they'd they probably won't put this clause in. <coughs> no, I, I put this clause in to assure the seller I'm going to follow through on my commitment. I'm not a vulture. I'm here to help. You get help, I get help. How does the buyer, how does the seller know the bank will, well, may not because I've told them to contact me. Eventually, if they find out, for whatever reason, they do have this right. They can call and check the bank themselves periodically. They can just call the yeah. bank. Is he making the payment on time? No. She'll say, he or she'll say, is the payments being made? Are you getting the payments? Because she could say, well, I've got a company managing my payments for me. I just want to make sure they're being made. Or if she still have online access, she'll see it. Debt to income. If the seller plans to buy another house, remember this remains in their name. If they want to buy another house, they get another house with another mortgage on top of that. They may have a problem qualifying due to debt to income. Yeah. Would you agree? Yeah. That's a possibility. That's a possibility. So I'll go ahead and address that. Uh, we pretty much say our rock star dream team attorney can set this up so it doesn't negatively impact, impact your debt to income. There are at least a couple of different ways my attorney can fix this. And so in the contract, I'll put a clause in there. If the seller chooses, steps can be taken to limit the impact uh, of this contract, which 
could um, present a problem on your daily income. Uh, however, uh, our attorney can fix this for you in advance. However, this is a cost of you and it typically costs $1,500. If you want to exercise this, check the box, yes or no. So we, we address this. Remember, I'm being completely above board. That's one way. That's one way we yeah, solve this. Yeah, we're saying my attorney can handle this for you. It's a couple of ways, at least a couple of ways she can solve this for you. It typically costs around $1,500. You're going to have to pay this. You want to exercise this or not? In my experience, people said no because they don't want to pay the money. Okay. So, but I'm addressing again, I'm completely above board, right? All right, so what's the process? All right, we need a good contract. Number two, we need a good attorney. All right, and we need an attorney, uh, and we're doing this completely above board, publicly uh, uh, de declaring to the whole world that we're transferring title through a deed. We're putting title insurance on this because we want to make sure there are no problems. Nobody's coming out of woodwork later and saying, oh, this property really belonged to a distant uncle. No, we're going to put title insurance on it. And if that uncle shows up, the title insurance is going to pay for it. This is my property. I own it. At closing, I'm going to know I own this. So we're doing everything completely above board. I'm also working with a real estate attorney that's a title company that knows how to do this. So my attorney knows what I'm doing, working on my behalf, and she's doing all this transfer. They're the title company. She's making sure this title is clean. I want clean title. In my opinion... Real estate investing should be no guesswork. It shouldn't be, I hope this work. I'm going to set this up where I know it works. Okay, so I need a dream team attorney. And also I need a dream team attorney that knows how to handle assignments. You know, some attorneys don't know how to handle an assignment. What if I wanted to put this on a contract and sell it to you for $18,000? In my contract, there's going to be a clause that says, I can assign this to anyone. And my attorney if I want to sign it, should be able to handle this at closing. Single closing, not double closing. Make sense? Okay. Does it work for a wholesaler? Does this work for a wholesaler? Can we go back to the closing process? Sure. You didn't mention homeowner's insurance. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, I'm going to talk about insurance in a moment. Can you hold on? Well, we're running short on time, and I didn't know if you were done with the closing Yes, I'm going to talk about insurance. I'm going to talk about insurance. Really important. In fact, insurance is where this usually goes wrong. The insurance person you use, that's the person that usually notifies the bank there's a problem here, the that title is transferred. So if you want to know where the problems come from, problems come from the investor who didn't make the mortgage payment on time, and that's silly. The investor just shot himself in the foot by not making the payments on time. Make the payments on time. The second major way to get messed up with a sub two is having an insurance company that notifies the mortgage company that the title has transferred. Because if you're trying to get the insurance in your name and you change your name because you now own it, they're contacting the mortgage company. Okay, so does it work for a wholesaler? Yes, does it work for fix and flip? It works really well for fix and flip because you're not holding sub two for six months. Does it work for a buy and hold? Yes, if you're doing it correctly. Because remember, you're keeping this, and you could keep this for another 15 years. You could keep it for 30 years. And you want to be smooth selling, right? You don't want problems once you get into this. Sub two will work for all these. So the process is, here's the, you need a good contract, a good attorney, you need a good specific power of attorney. And your Rock star, dream team attorney is going to write you up a specific power of attorney so that you can now contact the bank. And to the bank, you're operating as the person who's managing the property on behalf of the person whose mortgage is named in, even though you own it. You're not going to tell them you own it. You're saying you are managing the property. Remember, we're keeping everything above board. We're talking to the mortgage company. Don't you want to know what the balance is? Don't you want to have online access? Right? So the specific power of return allows you to do that. 
You're going to pay the mortgage on the first of each month. We already talked about it. You're going to pay the taxes on time. You know what? The municipality that's charging you taxes, they will find out that ownership has changed. But that's no problem. They don't care who pays taxes. They don't care. They just want to make sure somebody pays taxes. And they don't care who. You don't have a problem with taxes. If you're going to have a problem, it's going to be with the insurance company. Which is the reason why you need a rock star dream team insurance broker who works with investors. He or she knows exactly what you're doing. And when they contact the bank, they're going to contact and use the same verbiage you would use. You're going to use a broker. And there are two ways you could do this. This is our recommended way. You keep the policy in the previous owner's name. I'll explain that in just a moment. And under lost payee, you use your entity or any other private lenders that you're using. Okay? So you're going to keep it in the previous owner's name. Is the bank going to have a problem with that? No. So when you update the policy or get a new policy or cheaper policy through your Rockstar insurance broker, they're going to bring your costs down. Remember, we want cash flow. Lower our costs, increases our cash flow. So we're going to get a new policy, could get a new policy on the renewal. And you're going to keep it in the previous owner's name. So the bank's not going to think anything strange here. The lost payee is going to be the mortgage company. And you add your entity to it, too. If you happen to use private lenders, you're going to add them as a lost payee, too. This is a recommended way we say you handle insurance. But you have a broker who knows what you're doing, works with investors. Yes. Yes. Yes, yes, yes. If you like have a HELOC on it or a second mortgage, right. yes, they will be lost payees. Yes, yeah. That's correct. Yeah. That is correct. Any questions about this? In this case, since we're using it as a rental, this is going to be a landlord's policy. Or if you're using it to flip, then it's going to be a builder's risk insurance policy. But you're only oh, keeping so that for six months, nine months, whatever. Well, I use builder's risk as a flip that protects you if something goes wrong during the rehab. Landlord's policy is when you're just renting it out. Okay? That's how you handle insurance. Another way to handle insurance is to get a separate policy. So some people do sub twos, they leave the first policy alone, and they get their own policy protecting them, but you're paying double the cost. There's two ways you can do this. Might be three, but there's two ways you can handle it. But the problem will come out of your insurance, so you want to handle that with care. Are we getting a little more comfortable here? Yep. Yeah, getting there. Okay. Questions? We're at the end. Done. Okay. Any final questions? <laughs> We're done. <laughs> Y'all ready to go out and do sub twos? Yes. 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 Yeah. All right. Let's go around the room. Ready to do a sub two? Yeah. 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 Uh, Mehmet, you ready to do a sub two? When I'm ready. What'd you say? When I'm ready. When, when you're I'm ready? ready. What you do is partner with me. If you're kind of sketchy, you're not sure how you do it, you partner with me. I'll help okay. you do it. Next. You want to do a sub yeah, two? I'm yeah. Ready. Yeah. Ready to do a sub two? Absolutely. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Hopefully. Yes. Ooh. I like that. <laughs> All right, let's thank the presenter for this excellent presentation. Thank you so much. You guys are great, bud. <laughs>